All right, we're going to talk about graphing sinusoidal functions, and that um, means sine functions or cosine functions. Uh, they are basically the same thing, uh, just one of them is shifted um, left or right a certain amount, and it lands right on top of the other one. So this works for all sine and cosine functions. And we're going to focus on the four main transformations that can happen to these graphs. Um, a basic cosine function starts at 1, starts at 0, 1, and it comes down, back up, and when it gets to 2 pi, it's back up to 1. So at pi, it was down at negative 1. At pi over 2, it was at 0. And at 3 pi over 2, it was at 0. A sine graph, a basic sine graph, that was y equals cosine x. A sine graph is very similar, but it starts at 0, and it goes up, back down, at pi and then back up to zero at its starting point. So that's what we're starting with, but we're going to focus on all of the different ways we can transform, so shift and stretch this graph, and there are four main ways. And the first one is, um, they're all de determined by these four numbers called A, B, C, and D in this setting. A is going to be the sinusoidal axis. And that just means, another way to say that would be midline. That's just your new ground level. This is the um, vertical shift. And so if, the, if, you know, if this A is a 2, um, it, this entire graph is going to be shifted up to our new sinusoidal axis will be up at positive 2. And A sometimes could be written at the end of the um, equation. So watch, watch for it back there also. Okay, so there's our vertical shift. The next thing you want to consider, and I'm doing these in the order in which you're going to need to use them to sketch your graph. B is the amplitude. And amplitude is the distance from the sinusoidal axis up to the peak. It's also the same distance as, the, as down to the lowest points. The common mistake is to call this amplitude the whole thing. That is not true. Amplitude is half of the distance from top to bottom, or it's the distance from the midline to the top or the midline to the bottom. So that's the next thing we're going to consider when we sketch a graph. The third thing we're going to consider, we're actually going to go um, out of order for this one. D is the horizontal shift. Also, also called a phase shift sometimes. And that's just, you know, shifting the whole graph left to right. And the way we're going to find that starting point is we're going to take our initial value, which for a sine is right at the origin, and for a cosine is right up at 0, 1. And we're going to shift it left to right to get our new starting point, and then we'll go from there. And then finally, we have... Um, C. C is going to be how we determine our period. If we are in radians, 2 pi divided by C, or in degrees, 360 divided by C, but we're going to spend most of our time in radians, 2 pi divided by C equals the period. And this tells me how long, from that purple starting point, how far do I need to progress down the x-axis before I complete one full Revolution. The reason it's 2 pi divided by c is because a typical sine or cosine graph um, has a period of 2 pi, as we talked about earlier. And this c value is going to be what stretches or shrinks a graph horizontally. So let's just get right into some examples. All right, so this top example. And these, I'm not giving you graph paper intentionally, not giving you a grid, because it's a lot easier to just label the important points than it is to try to fit the important points onto a grid, because we're going to usually get some awkward points that we're trying to graph. But um, here are the things I know. This thing has a sinusoidal axis of negative 1. So like I said, it could be at the end. So that's our A value, negative 1. So that tells me that um, whatever else I know, this thing is going to be centered, have a midline down here at negative 1. That's my sinusoidal axis, my new ground level after I shift this thing down 1. 
Okay, so then my next thing to consider is the amplitude. And that's the number that's being multiplied by the cosine function. So the amplitude is a half. That means I only move a half a unit up and a half a unit down to get to the top and the bottom of this graph. So negative one half and negative three halves are the top and the bottom of this function. So this cosine graph that I'm going to draw does not go outside of this little orange window. Okay, so the next thing to consider is the horizontal shift. Where's my starting point? So typically this is a cosine graph and it would start up at the top because the cosine starts at the peak value because cosine of zero equals one. But I'm going to shift that point over left or right some amount. Okay, so in the example I gave you earlier, still down here on the bottom right, I had C times parentheses X minus D. If the question is given where um, C is multiplied by theta, well, they're using theta instead of X in this case, but if, if this C is attached, I need to factor it out. And we've seen this in previous translations discussions. I need to get the two away from the variable. So let me consider these parentheses to be this. 2 times parentheses theta plus, and I divide it by 2. And when I take 5 pi over 3 and divide it by 2, I get 5 pi over 6. So sometimes this is not a real natural factoring process, but just make sure if you were to distribute the 2 back in, you would get your original expression, and I would. I would get 2 theta, and if I doubled 5 pi over 6, I would get 5 pi over 3. So what this tells me is that 5 pi over 6, the d value, is my um, horizontal translation. So I have plus five pi over six. What that means is I actually need to move left five pi over six to get my starting point. So let me mark five pi over six on my um, x-axis, negative five pi over six. And this is what I meant by it's easier to not use graph paper, just, just mark the important points. So I know that my first point of my graph is right here because I showed you earlier it was right there, but I've moved it left 5 pi over 6. So there's my starting point. Now, what's the period? The period, um, let me add this to my list. I went left 5 pi over 6, and now the period. The period is 2 pi divided by whatever number got factored out. So that's 2 pi divided by 2, or pi. All right, so what I've done is I've squished my graph horizontally to make it finish one full revolution in one pi instead of two pi. So in a window of two pi where I used to have two full waves, I will now have just one full wave. And so what I need to do now is figure out if I add pi to my starting value, what does that take me to? So if I take negative five pi over six, negative five sixths, and add one pi to it, that takes me to one sixth pi or pi over six. And if I add pi again, it's going to take me to 7 pi over 6. I'm just doing a little um, addition of fractions. If I add pi again, which is 6 pi over 6, I'm going to get to 13 pi over 6. Every single one of these marks is a complete period of the graph, a complete cycle of the graph. So I'm going to be back to the top at all of those, of all of those points. In between all of those points, so halfway between negative 5 pi over 6 and 1 pi over 6. Between negative 5 and 1 is negative 2. So right here at negative 2 pi over 6. And halfway between 1 and 7 is 4 pi over 6. And I realize these fractions could be simplified, but I'm going to leave them because I like this consistent sixths thing going on. So halfway between, I'm at the bottom. Halfway between, I'm at the bottom. Halfway between, I'm at the bottom. And then halfway between bottom and top, I'm on the sinusoidal axis. Okay, and this graph, because it was an amplitude of one half, it got kind of small down there. But that's enough info to graph several cycles of my equation. All right, so there's one good one. It's, it's good because it's difficult. It has some, some awkward numbers on it. Um, but nothing too bad, all right? These four steps are going to be the same. These four translations are going to be the same, whether the 
um, values are awkward or not. So we might have to work with some fractions, but we're going to do the same thing every time. All right, so let's move to the next one. What do we know about number two? I know that its sinusoidal axis is four. Here's our A value. This whole thing is up four. I know that its amplitude is two. This one, I've included one with a minus, all right, because this one's also going to have a vertical reflection, which is not one of the four main things, um, but it's something we're going to have to address. What if it's minus two cosine? We'll get to that in just a minute. But the amplitude is two. I've already factored out um, the number with x, so the pi over four is going to tell me the period. But let me do the left three first, because I have a, a plus three in these go in the opposite direction of the sign, so a plus three actually goes left three. And the period is two pi divided by pi over four. So when I divide that, the pi's are gonna cancel, and two, two divided by a fourth is eight. So one of two things is gonna happen. You're either gonna have pi as a part of your period, and it's gonna be a part of the, the scale on your axis, if you put pi in the equation, then you're not going to have pi as a period because the, the pi's are going to divide out. So when you're doing word problems, and if something's happening every eight seconds, and you don't want to express time in terms of pi, because why would you ever say four pi seconds? You wouldn't do that. You would, we, we count by seconds, not multiples of pi. So if you want to get pi out of your um, graph, you need to put pi in this location in your equation. All right, so let's graph this thing. Uh, first things first, sinusoidal axis at four, amplitude of two. So I, don't, I just really need to show the top half here. So I'm going to go four, and then I'm going to go up two to six, and down two to two. This is where this graph exists. We have sinusoidal four, and we have amplitude of two. So this graph is going to live in this window. Um, so that takes care of my first two translations. Next is the left three. And I wish I had moved that axis over. Because my labels are in the way a little bit, but it's all right. So let's go um, one, two, negative three. And this is a negative cosine. So my starting point of a cosine is the top. My starting point of a negative cosine is the bottom. So here's the first point on my graph. All right. If you were to have a negative sign, it would still start at the origin, but it would go downward. This is negative sign. Negative cosine starts at the bottom and goes up and then back down. All right. So that's that's how you deal with a negative. You you um, do a vertical flip. Okay. So this spot right here, negative oh, negative three, is the first point on my graph. Okay, so now I'm going to be right back where I started eight units later. So negative three plus eight takes me over to five. One, two, three, four, five. So when I get to five, I will be back where I started at the bottom. Halfway between negative three and five, which is four units after negative three, is one. That's when I'll be at the top. Halfway between those two spots, which is negative one, I'll be in the middle. And at... 3, I'll be in the middle. So 1, negative 1, and 3. Those are my somewhat important points on this graph. And then basically, from here on out, every two units, 7, 9, 11, 13, I'm just going to have this pattern where I go bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, and so on. This, this graph goes forever to the left and forever to the right. Usually we draw a couple of periods um, somewhere near the first quadrant. Um, but remember, these things go on in all directions, uh, in, in both directions forever, as long as you want to graph it. So here's the graph. This thing, um, just in review, had a couple of interesting features. It had a negative sign, which made me start at the bottom and go up. And it had pi in the equation, which took pi off of my x-axis. Okay. And... For the sake of time, I'm not going to do this entire graph, but I wanted to leave you with one that was in degrees. Okay, when you do this one, the period 
will be 360 over 4, but everything else is the same. Um, but every 90 degrees, you'll have your, your, have your full sine wave. So we can talk about this one in class, but um, try to graph this and bring any questions you have with you, and we'll talk about them further.